for the second year in a row, the Hockenheim Ring will host the German Grand Prix, which had a very wet first practice, which meant for little running, but this was to be the only wet session throughout the weekend, so once things got back to normal in practice two and three, it was expected to be, this being a power track, to be a battle between Toyota and Alfa Romeo once again for outright supremacy. Although Mercedes did bring some small upgrades to this weekend, as they race here on home soil, and expecting these upgrades could help them secure fourth place in the championship with still a long way to go in their battle with Red Bull and Williams for that fourth spot. Red Bull though did look to be an outside chance this weekend, with Verstappen looking absolutely mighty in third practice, but all the teams are doing their qualifying runs, and the Dutchman could be set for at least a front row start, or second at worst, going off the pace he was bringing out in third practice. Vettel though looked to be having a struggle once again with the Ferrari not being up to pace, but as ever the capacity crowd was more than behind their five-time champion. Hey guys, Renault here. Welcome back to Formula 1. Here for the German Grand Prix, the Hockenheim Ring, for the second year in a row. Now you can get a photo there out of the front row and it's going to be one of the Renaults there taking pole position. Now they've they dropped back a little bit in previous races but they're getting back up to speed now. They've got a look at Charles Leclerc there down the order, not having, having the best qualifying in the world. The Sebastian Vettel there, P7, so good luck there from the German, maximising what that Ferrari really is capable of. Oh, you can get a fast look at the starting grid as we come now on to the full Asian lap. It's John Eric Verne taking his first pole position of the season, and Josh Terry completing the front row. As Ajita takes a point for Toyota in third, with the Verstappen signing on the second row as Rebel predicted. The championship leader Lewis Hamilton in P5. Kevin Magnussen starts second in the second of the Alfa Romeos, ahead of Verstappen, ahead of Vettel in the Ferrari, and Schumacher, the other German, in eighth for the Williams. Thorkenberg in ninth, and Gasly running off the top ten for Alfa Tari, with everyone else going outside the top ten on the mediums, with the Tifi in eleventh, Arianto twelfth, and the second McLaren of Norris in thirteenth, Albon down in fourteenth, and the second of the Red Bulls, with Perez. 15th, Russell in 16th, Sergio Seta Camera 17th in the second Alpha Tari, with Kvyat only managing 18th out in Q1, with Leclerc P19, and Lance Stroll bringing up the rear of the grid in the Aston Martin. And over the midfield fight, looking closer, we've got Latifi. Anyone really from Perez upwards towards Vettel really has a chance of getting in the fight for that midfield, especially with everyone stuck on the medium tyres. They may be looking to do one less stop in the race. And they're going to be looking to have, have some pretty good tie wear if they want to try and make that one stop work. Now, looking at us are lining up in second place, John Eric Van taking. I don't want to say a surprise proposition because he's the 2017 World Champion, but it looks like he's finally starting to get to grips now with that Renault car. Now, coming to the five red lights for the start of the German Grand Prix. Lights out of the way, you guys. A very long hold. It's been a pretty poor start for myself. Verstappen gets an absolute launch out the inside line, trying to squeeze as much as we can. But looking at this, how much the other two Toyota will go to back out. Verstappen goes over the curve, has to back out. We're getting caught up. We spun. We spun into the wall. We hit there by Hamilton. We go back for the entire field of capacity. Oh, that was so close. They almost hit there one of the Aston Martins as well. And, oh, that couldn't have got any worse for us. We got pinned on the inside of the Toyota. They ran the outside. They actually got a safety car now deployed as well. That's actually really going to help us now. The safety car being deployed that saved us. Now we, well, we're going to have to pit for a new front wing. The safety car absolutely saving us there because we really do have to go around this time lap now. And now looking at a replay of what happened to us. So we've got a really long hold on five red lights. And as ever, we don't get a good start because this Alpha May takes a few lights to get the tyres up to temperature. And it squeezes on the inside line, we give a snap of space. And as the Toyota, we, we run out step, but the Toyota he just backs down because he gets a poor line. We just make contact with it and we bounce off it into the wall. And if everyone's going to have at this time, we can't really see the Aston Martin, we just miss it. I think if we had our front wing still. And I think we may have taken out Stroll there unintentionally. But on to the end of that lap, we managed to make our way back around now into the pit lane. We've got Stroll and Leclerc in 19th and 18th places. And we're in now for our new front wing. And of course, the, the change of strategy as well. And we're going to come in, get a new what's left of our front wing taken off. And we're going to go to the medium. So we're now we're, we're, we're effectively switching to what everyone outside the top 10 was doing. So we're doing the effective one stop from now. I mean, it's only a two stop actually, but now on the mediums at the back of the grid, we've got 10 cars at least. We've got 12 or 13 cars to get past to get back to where this Alfa Romeo should be. And from the back of the back of the grid, we started, we started on the front row. We had some really good pace in qualifying, not as, not as much as Vern took pole by three or four tenths. And on to the end of lap three. The safety car now is coming in. And looking at the mini it still looks like it's Vern leading the way. Oh no, right down the back of that Aston Martin racing car. Of Lance Stroll, after his poor stars, I'll mention to the safety car holders, I'll catch up to the back of the pack. 
And the swing away a little bit because there's no taking a stuff anytime, so to give himself a little bit of space so I can launch around the final card, don't get involved in any shenanigans that are happening around the final card. But now it's Jano Vern that leaves the pack back to Green Flag Racing. He's got both the Toyotas that are right behind him, so Jano Vern. Jeff, he's gonna have to have a lot of pace now if he wants to try to hold, hold off those two Toyotas. I mean, the, the Renault is probably better through the corners, but a little bit more downforce than the Toyota, but those Toyota, those engines are just, they're, they're on another planet really. They're out, out of this world, the, the, the amount of power those engines have. Of course, no DRS here. This is going to be on pure slow stream now. And it's going to be an easy move, move here for Massachusetts. It's going to blast past John Eric Van. Van, you tried to squeeze Magica, but, how, but now Massachusetts on the inside line and even outbreaks him before the corner. So that's how the, the, those engines are just otherworldly in the back of those two Toyotas. Now Massachusetts, look how he's already pulling away from John Eric Van. And these Toyotas, they're, really, they're just something else. And now, and us being at the back of the grid now, this is, is Hamilton's chance out. His big break to, go, to try and break our mental try and gain some points back on us. But now, because we're still stuck in the back of this queue here, we've got Lance all over the back. Obviously, Charles Leclerc and that Ferrari. And Leclerc, I mean, he's really not been having the best season of the world. I mean, he had a really good season last year. He won his first race for Ferrari, but the Ferrari car just wasn't quite consistent enough. And he got a few of the podiums for this year. Feels like Vettel is really the one getting the better out of that car over the Monegasque. This Vettel's up in safe of seventh and the clash down here in P18. Of course, both the cars are going to be equal because they want to try and get the best result of the Canon Championship. As Massachusetts sets the first lap of race, but so no surprise since he's the one that led this the first green flag lap of racing. And all of the back that we show looking to the inside line, we're getting a good run here on the Canadian. We can't make a move there. I'm not trying to move through turn one after what happened on the tour on lap one. As we're 21 seconds up on our first lap, which again and again really isn't all that all that surprising. The shore is getting very fast. I'm trying to launch it around the outside line of the Canadian because our car is better than the Aston Martin. We're trying to go for a switch line, but the Aston Martin does have the AMG engine, which isn't all too bad. It's still not quite as good though as the Ferrari. I definitely nowhere near the Toyota engine. And now then, up to Richmond, we've got so much fuel we managed to save it under the safety car. Almost four hours extra of, of Rich Mix fuel saved up. Not even using a higher risk mode yet. We're still looking strong as the once again and trying to outbreak it around the outside line. We have to go lay on the brakes to try and pinch the tires again. Try to go switch one when the show pokes the car perfectly on the apex and forces our wide, forces off the track. We can do a bit of 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 I mean, we haven't really seen a whole lot of the season of the Aston Martin guys, but it's dropped off a little bit in recent races from where it was at the start of the year. So that's some really good driving there from Stroll, some good defensive driving we've seen back when he was at Haas last year. Stroll was the ultimate defender, because whenever he found himself in a good position, he just had to defend left, right and centre to try and keep it, because the Haas car was not a good car. Now we get a really good one though, on Charles Leclerc once again. We can now say, well, once again, we're still not, I'm still not trying to move there through the first corner. It's not worth it now, because the car's been out again, but, and... There's no guarantee that we'll get another safety car. So we'll have a look, at, look there to the line, just trying to do anything we can to try and put off Stroll. Try and put off Charles Leclerc because we're already putting away from Stroll because uh, with the fighting that we had, lost a little bit of time. And it's going to be Ferrari engine car versus Ferrari engine car. It's going to be about, is, is that Ferrari less dragging the right way? I mean, we've got the exact same engine, so it's going to be from pure engine speed. There's going to be no difference there. I mean, actually, you think the Ferrari might be better because it's their engine. They might keep a little bit of info back from us since we are just purely a customer team. Uh, and on to the end of lap 6, we're still gaining all over the back. But now we've got some of the lead lap, some of the leading cars now having to come in after their first stop. This has been around the time that we would have had to stop anyway. And they're going to a certain medium tyre, so there's going to be a two-stop there from the Toyota. I think quite easy which one that was, but it's either Massachusetts or Hamilton. And you've got the Red Bull there, of Verstappen doing the same as well, and one of the Renaults as well. So I'm guessing it's probably Hulkenberg, since it's the one that's now somehow behind Verstappen. So this is the time when all the, the two-stoppers, the front-running cars would have had to come in. So us being now actually on the better strategy might actually really help us out later on. Because we've got Stroll getting up on the back once again, because this queue of cars... I mean, it's not, I mean we're, we're all being held up, so Stroll's going to gain back time. They've got, it looks like a bit of a move there going up in front. You've got some very, very close in there between the Alfa Tauri and one of the Mercedes there. I think of Danny Kvyat. And we're getting, a good, we're getting such a good one there, Charles Leclerc. We haven't got the downforce on that front. We're pretty much pushing him through this next right hander. We're going to look to get the inside line. We're going to go around the outside line once again. Just trying to find the line where the Leclerc doesn't go. We managed to make this around this time. We get a little bit on the curling. But Leclerc, uh, we forced it so much into the line. He's he forced to back out of that really because he would never get around the corner otherwise with the line that he'd have to take. So then up now into what is actually a legitimate P13. Because we're racing all these midfield cars. But everyone else has had to stop. So we're, we're in front of all the cars that have already stopped for position. And of course, we can go to the same meeting that's running now. Our teammate K-Mag comes in for his first stop now of the race. So all over the back though of Seth Gamma. Because it gave us like, I don't know which of these cars are pitting, which cars aren't. And it'll be Pierre Gasly. Of course, he's signed something which might actually not have been too good for the French win. 
I mean, on Saturday, yes, it's all good starts out of the top 10, but now he's on such a bad strategy, it seems, because he's, he's got to make up somewhere, about 21, 22 seconds, as it goes now onto another set of the soft tyres. I mean, that makes sense, if you need the alternate strategy, you mean, it'd be soft, medium, soft, or soft, soft, medium. And you're going to come out now behind one of the Williams, is he? You're going to side by side with a fellow Honda powered car. You're going to come out there just in front of Mick Schumacher, that will be. And indeed, it is the 2019 um, defending world champion Mick Schumacher. He's dropped there behind the Alphatari, so not been a good outlet there for the German. Because now he's going to have DRF there on the back of the Alphatari. And with, with these guys having the exact same engine, there's going to be no difference in performance there. But it's like he's just got a bit, a bit of a poor run there down the straight. Maybe he's suffering with some sort of car issue, because there's no way you assume he should be dropping back down the order like that. And on to lap 9. Well, the end of lap 9 now, start of lap 10, we're on the back there with Seto Cam, because a little bit tentative to make, just to make us. But just to make sure that we're not going to make a move there through Tamo, which I wasn't going to try it anyway because he doesn't know that. Oh, he once again going very defensive there to the inside line. Honestly, needlessly defensive because I wasn't, I wasn't close enough to make a move. I'm going to go for a switch my line. He's going to cut all over the curbing there. I'm going to give a little switch back once again. He's trying all once again with the car. He's trying all the lines that Seto Karma doesn't go for. No, right behind the back though. All the Brazilian going to move to the inside line now. And it's outside coming, but now it's the inside line for the hairpin. We've got Leclerc there looking with us. We're going to go lay on the brakes again, try and make a move up this line. We had a little bit of contact last race in Britain. We're going to force him out wide, get a little bit of uh, payback there for him. We force him out so much that we're going to allow Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari to make a move as well. Then we've got Lewis Hamilton and Massachusetts in the Toyota. The cars have already pitted. Now coming up behind us now once again. Now we've got Santa Carrera getting defensive there too. The 2008 world champion. As he's going through. So somewhere Hamilton's managed to make a move on his team at Massachusetts. They're looking to try and make a move pretty soon there on the set of camera image. And now on to lap 14, he's made the move stick. And he's also on the set of soft tyres. So Hamilton, once again, is going to be pitting very soon. Playing in the next lap or two, I would think. Now we're on the back there of our fellow Brent Lander. No, because such a good run once again. But into turn one, we're going to think about making a move once again. Just back out of the car. I'm not trying to move through here. I'm trying to try and take the advantage. Connor cut line. We're going to get DRS once again. There's no excuse. He's two days long. We're going to try to get We've got such a good run though. On our fellow Brent, he's going to get very late on the brakes. How does he not hit the car in front? We're going to switch once again. We're going to cut the curb a little bit. Try to take all the limits, all the limits that we can with the track limits here. Now with the DRS, we're going to struggle with no, it's getting a bad run. We're just going to breeze past our fellow Brent. We've got Perez there in front of us. We're going to make the move stick there, and as you can see, we're going to be four times that's so good. Then now we've got Hamilton there coming with us. That's not what we need. It's the battle of the Brits here. And currently, we're the leading Brit. Full track position, because Norris has got one stop left to make. I've got one stop left to make. Hamilton's got one stop left to make. We've all got one more stop left in this race. Now, Sergio Perez now is our next target in Perez. I mean, he's had a really good season on his comeback to F1 since, since he was out, out of a job in 2016 when. But when Force India became Toyota and they chose to take Hamilton instead and keep Ocon. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure Paris here is going to have a point to prove to the team that he could have been employed at but wasn't. We're all over the back here. All the Mexican, because of course all, all of us effective one stoppers for me and one stoppers for everyone else. They're not going to be coming in just yet. There's a corner out there. Round the final corner, got Sergio Perez again. He's not going to do this, of course, this being a DRS train, but for us it's not going to make any difference. We've got, we've got the Williams there with Latifi coming in for a stop. So Williams pulling the pulling the pulling a little bit early, so probably going to be set of hard ties there for the Canadian. Now then Paris gets eventually going to try and go in the but Paris passes his car perfectly in the middle of the road, leaving us absolutely no space there to go. As we come around in, uh, we're, going get, we're going to get a good run on the next thing, though, the Portuguese inside line. We're going to try and make the run side by side. The Sergio Perez going to go to breeze past here with the DRS. I mean, we, we didn't even need DRS right here. I think we would have, passed, would have ended up getting past him. But crucially, though, it looks like Hamilton is not going to be able to follow us through again this time. As Perez once again goes defensive there from the Toyotas because he knows that that's also tough you've got Massachusetts there trying to make a move there. Orlando Norris as well. And Norris is going to try and fight the Japanese driver back, which he does. And holds it on the inside line. Norris there just manages to fend off the Toyota. Which like Perez, he knows this is, this is for trap position and one of the few chances for all the midfield cars to try and steal some much valuable points from each other and also holding up the, the front cars as well now that we've got Danny Kvyat now then in front of us so we're running out a little bit wide there the tyres are starting to go off a little bit now we're moving on these tyres for 15 laps we're just, just trying to push the absolute limit out of the side trying to push these tyres for everything that they've got left which isn't really going to be a lot now this five race I mean, we've gone purple through the, we've gone green through the middle sector that's not really surprised since we have the DOS now then, there's Paris coming to the pits along with the Toyota, so the Toyota have actually shot himself in the front there. I think it should have gone, should have gone onto the mediums earlier. And well, now it's going to be a pit lane battle between Toyota and Aston Martin. Of course, the Aston Martin crew is what the Haas pit crew were from last year. And they're going to go into a set of hard ties there for Sergio Perez. 
And I can get it back in front of the Toyota, which he has actually just pulled, it looks like he's pulled a little bit of time. So, really good pistol there from the Aston Martin Pay Crew. As Perez comes out now back onto the track in front and looks good with a bit of a time gain there on that Toyota. Well, on natural car performance, I don't think it's going to be too long though until the Toyota rocks up and just goes straight past. But now then, on to lap 19. We've got Matsushita behind us, and Matsushita has the fastest lap of the Grand Prix, but it doesn't matter because we're going to be boxing now at the end of this lap. We're doing exactly, we're doing exactly what we need to do, we're running our own race. You know, hopefully we can try and gain a little bit, because because our fight now isn't with Matsushita, Hamilton, and Verstappen and all that. Our fight now is with the other midfield cars, so the the, uh, the Ferraris, Alfa Tauris, Latifi and that. Trying to go back up to 6th and 7th place by in this race, which would be a good recovery for us. We know we're going to go into another set of medium time, though. we ran it long for this exact reason. And then we can go to the semis, so everyone else who we were racing is on hard tyres, I think. But now we'll come back down the set of medium, we're going to come out there behind one of the Mercedes, so uh, this shows how far back down the order that we've, we've come back out onto the track point in somewhere around 14th or 15th, I'd say. Once everything works out now, with everyone else making their last stops before us and getting an undercut on us. Although we've come out in front of one of the Toyotas, I'm not quite sure what's happened there. I mean, of course, they'll be on the. They'll be on the uh, we, we've come up, somehow, we've come out in front of Lewis Hamilton. I mean, with, the other guy, with, with, with him being stuck in this traffic, he's on the same medium size as well, so he's got, actually known as Master Cheetah. He's uh, they, they to, they've done the strategy, which I would have done soft, soft onto the medium. I probably would have been medium second and soft at the end, but either way. No, we're done now in P12 behind Danny Kivia in that Mercedes. Master Cheetah is right up behind us. They're getting a pretty poor run because the tyres are not quite on the same yeah, And of course, we've seen back at Italy, we know how Masachita is the ultimate driver of putting on pressure. He, he forces into a state there on that day. You've got a bit of a move there going on into, into the, this hairpin type corner. Got one of the Williams there doing battle there with one of the uh, Mercedes, it looks like. They force out one of the Friars coming through. They still keep, still keep it side by side to the final few corners as the Friar there comes into the pit lane for their second stop of the race. So as, um, I'm guessing that's probably then Sebastian Zell. We get a pretty poor run there. Now Sheena can try and make a move from the inside line into the first corner. You know, you try and make it sleep, we have to back out of it. And that's why you don't make a move there into that one. You're never going to get a good run. But talking of the good run, you've got Danny Cavelli going very aggressive down the back of the Kai Freddy, which is okay. It's the Stevens, and now we've got the two Mercedes going to going battle now. Fabio Sadi just going to force his way there past Russell. I mean, it's our, our other fellow Brick gets a poor run. And we're going to try and make a move on the outside line. And uh, Breeze past him. Now we get such a good run. We're try and make a move on Danny Kvyat. We're going to try and pass both Mercedes in, in the same straight. And we're going to make a goes very defensive. She's like, going to force uh, forces out the long way around. Now he's trying to go for a switch, which we do. We get some credit to perfection. But Kvyat on the racing line. It's fine. Now we, we have the better traction. Well, with our newer tyres and our fresher tyres and the softer combat. We're going to try and force our force way through on the Russian. And Kvyat has, has to concede defeat there. There's some really good driving there as well from Danny Kvyat. Get the right idea. Then we got Latifi down in front of us. Also, on the say hi, Latifi in P5. The Canadian's having a really, really good debut season, honestly. Up there now, P5 actually got a yellow flag there right behind. So don't really know what's going on there. Is it, but we have, we have the, the green flag. That's like it's possibly a car retiring as, uh, as our teammate came back now into the pits. But uh, whatever's going on there, actually now is Sergio Perez. Ah, oh, Perez, he's having such a good race now. Safety car! Safety car is now deployed just as we come around the final corner. That's going to work out really well for K Mag. The safety car deployed just as we come around the final corner. Now then, looking at a replay, what happened to Sergio? I mean, he's, he, I mean, I don't think he's going to make cut out anyway. I mean, you've got the rebel in your front, so unless the rebel makes a mistake or something. I already know what's going to happen for Perez. He's coming out around now into the final sector of the lap. Everything still looks to be going okay for the Mexican. I mean, what's going on? Now he's actually now he's going slow. Now he's getting very slow. I don't know if he's lost drive or something. Hydraulics maybe. And I'm not quite sure what's going on there for him. And he pulls up there to the, to the inside line. I mean, that is actually safety car. I, I can see why. If it's hydraulics, then everything will be completely locked up. And uh, looking at the running order now under the safety car, because it's going to bunch up the pack. We've got Albert leading the way ahead there of Harry Anto and then Latifi currently in P3. We have ourselves now in fourth place. On the medium tyres ahead then of one of the Mercedes there, Danny Kvyat. And then we have the Toyota then of Lewis Hampton ahead then of Russell. And then the other Toyota of Matsushita. And then we have Verstappen in the second of the Red Bulls. Ahead then of the lead, actually ahead then of both the Renaults then of Jeff and Hulkenberg. Then we have our teammate K-Mag there just in time of them. So K-Mag, I mean, he will have saved time under the safety car. We have Norris there in the second McLaren. And we have both of the Alpha Tauris. 
And we have Shimi in the second Williams ahead there in both of the Ferraris. We're strong in the back, but now back onto Green Flag Racing is Alex Albon leading the Grand Prix for what I think might be the first time in his career. Giving a heavy tallow from the McLaren of London. And the three of these smell their first victory in Formula One. Three different cars, all, I mean, two of them are Honda Power cars, one of them is a Renault Power, so three different teams, two different engines. And just look at the mayhem going down with the midfield cars all stuck up behind all of the fast cars there as well. Right, going in when it's Harry onto Klosov, he's going to have to give it everything he's got now. Got Latifi getting on the back as well. Latifi coming in for a shot here of his first ever win. All these three of these drivers coming in for a shot of their first ever win. We've got Moose there going up behind. But Danny Kvyat now have to go defensive from the Toyota and of Lewis Hamilton. And we go very defensive to use the lines. Hamilton is going to drive clearly around the outside line. Nice move there from the from the 08 champion. Just driving clean around the outside line. Another driver who if things went his way could be a three-time world champion in Formula 1 right now. But uh, moving further on, it's like Albin's Albin's checking out now. Albin is giving everything he got using that Red Bull speed. Finally looking like he's getting to grips with that Red Bull car. He's pulling away from Rio Harianto. We've got Latifi there in P3, still with ourselves there in P4. And we remember we've got the fastest tyres here. And a, we've also got a worry about defending from Lewis Hamilton, our main championship rival, because we're in front of him now. Of course I'd like to get a podium, but beating our championship rival is the main priority in this Grand Prix. And Latifi with the DRS on the back of the Indonesian where of course is where Harry Otto got his first podium in Formula 1 in 2016. He could have won the race that day as well. He got another chance now but Latifi goes around the outside line into the hairpin. Harry Otto goes very defensive to the inside line. The team's going to have to go the long way here around the outside line. Put the power down which he does side by side still with the Indonesian. These cars are so even so far in the season. Side by side now giving the outside line both on hard tyres. The team's going to hurry around the outside line which he does. Harry Otto giving him a bit of a squeeze. But Latifi though keeps it to the inside line side by side still. Into the middle, this is going to be allowing Albon to pull away if he wants to keep, keep it side by side. Latifi ran the outside line once again. Albon pulling away. Harry is still keeping it side by side. And then outside line, Latifi gets good running. The Harry is still just about keeping his nose in the inside line. The two of them somehow avoid contact. I mean, maybe, maybe been a little bit of wheel bagging with Latifi with the racing line, with the momentum. Ran, ran the outside line, finally moves up now into P2. Of course, Williams so far this season haven't yet taken a podium finish. Uh, the team, the, the defending constructive champions with the Honda engine, the, 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 the they're getting back to where they were. They're getting into grips with the Honda engine now. They're still nowhere near where they were with the BMW a couple of years, last year and the years before. But Harry Anto, though, he knows he wants a second place back. He knows right now that the wins come back. Harry Anto, he's not going to give us second place. He wants to equal his best finish in Formula 1 at the track where he scored his first podium in 2016. Back in the McLaren. He's been in the McLaren his entire career. And he wants to be in second place there once again. Now, with the DRS wide open, he's going to try and make a move now. He's going to try and repass the KD. He's going to breeze past the claim signal in his camera angle. So I'm guessing he's already passed. He's easily passed the KD there. That. I'm sure Williams there would have given him everything that he's got from that hundred edge to try and take that second place. Well, podium still. Because, I mean, Harry Anto, he's a bit of a veteran now. He's been here since 2016. And Latifi is the rookie. But Latifi, though, he's not giving this one up. He's still sticking around the course. The more of these fights, the more this is going to allow Mid Hamilton to get, into the, to get involved. To get involved further behind. Of course, we have start getting defensive though from Hampton, which is uh, which is which is costing us time. And you can see the Q cars there right a bit now. Latifi once again we're gonna try and take second place, gonna try and go around the inside line once again. It did have been trying maybe before. Hayon Toe gonna try and go around the outside line. So it, it, it's rolls reverse this time. Well, Latifi into the corner is clearly because he's on the brakes well just to try and clear any line that Harry Anto could could have got. Now they're gonna try and pull away now out the hairpin, which he does. He's actually got a really good guy there to Harry Anto. But now that it's up to us now, can we try and gain on the back of the hair? Can we from the back of the grid? Get onto the podium. But now they're onto lap 32. Alban, you can't even see him, he's absolutely checked out. And with this time to hold of Hamilton, we've got a little bit of a gap though to the Brit now. We've, got, we've gone green through sector one, almost matched our best through sector two. We still could be on yet for our best lap of the race. We've still got Harry Amso in front of us. When we, he, 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 at this point, he's ready, he's just pulling us along, pulling us along for the ride. It's the McLaren and the Williams. I mean, McLaren, they've really been making a lot of progress. It's really been unnoticed, but they've definitely been making some good progress in the last few races. And Williams, once again, now they've brought their, yeah, once they brought their, their new car back to Spain, is when things really picked up. As we said, our personal best lap of the race, still nowhere near the fastest lap of the race. But now Harry Anto, once again, he's still got the DRS though on the back of the team. And I think Hamilton's back, I think, at this point, I think Hamilton's backed off. He's got some other cars there, got the Mercedes there, looking, looking racing up behind him. So I don't know if Hamilton's having some sort of car issues in these final few laps of the race. Then we've got Danny Kvyat now in the Mercedes, the team Hamilton left in 2015 to go to then Ferrari and then to Toyota. Now we've got Kvyat kind of going in the outside line. It's going to be, it could be a bit of a, a bit of satisfaction here for Danny Kvyat and I imagine for the Mercedes team as well. As Kvyat just drives around the outside line of, you know, of the Toyota. I'm pretty sure Hamilton must have some sort of car issue. Maybe that or his is absolutely finished. Hamilton using to try and battle through the order like we did earlier on. 
you know, Kvyat gets party defensively. He's got one left to try and hold off that Toyota, now as Kvyat gets him into P5, which I think, apart from his podium at the first race, first race will be his Hades best of the year on a, on a legitimate basis, because they have dropped back down the order a little bit as seasons progress. Like Mercedes, Mercedes uh, might be on the up now once again. I thought we've only got one lap in the race left to go. And at this point now, I'm pretty sure our tires are, our tires are definitely going to be finished out. We, we put up our, our best out last lap, but this lap definitely has not been the same. We, we're, sl we're down on, on all sector times. Just, I mean, just by a tenth, uh, that, that tenth could be the difference between the podium or not now, because the hard tires, I mean, the hard tires now at this point will be will be the grippier tires over the, over what we have, even though we have the faster car in the Alpha than the Williams and the McLaren. But this, this field of cars, even with the Alpha, uh, Alpha Renault with Titan being, uh, being the uh, closest now. Because on the final lap of the race, we still with, with our three with Titans, we've got to move there up in front. They've got the TV. Lose, he's going to lose second place on the final lap. Harry goes on the inside line. Once again, trying to do what he did back in 2016, trying to try to try and possibly take the win that day. And Harry to make some stick there on on the Lucas TV. TV though, still, he still could be off his fast safe He's not going to get his one up there. Harry to get his first to the inside line. He's trying to look for a way around. And we're right on the back now, these around the back of the Canadian. Because the, the seat that was vacated by Kubica to make way for Nicholas Latifi, he, run, he was a runner-up, I think, in in F2 last year to his teammate Sergio Tetikara. But now Alex Albon, I mean, he wouldn't be thinking that. He started the, the, the race. What was he 14th or 15th? Now Alex Albon comes around the final corner in his Red Bull car. Now coming up to the line, the, the teams he got that people on Alex Albon Great is a race winner. Really, really good race. Good job on the tires. Woo. Thanks, guys. Really, really good job, Alex. Thank you for the hard work last night. Good recovery, Alex. And that was absolutely deserved from Albon. From P14, what it was, putting someone like that to win his first Grand Prix. Yeah, and on Mercedes' home side as well, just rub it in, the, rub it in there a little bit, though, to the to the German giants. Christy's one of there. They put the faith in t t to promote Albon last year. And it looks like he, he got a few points, but now he's finally got the big one. He's got the big W now. He's got the win. Actually, this, this, the team there, his side of the average, looking absolutely delighted there with that win. And why wouldn't they be, Albin? It's, it's been a long time coming, but he's finally got it now. It's Hockenberg down in ninth place. I mean, I think that's why he started, actually. So, not, not been the best race there for the German. But Albin out onto the podium. Alex Albin, a race winner. Alongside Harry Anto and Nicholas Latifi as well. So, and I'm pretty sure no one would have predicted that podium at the start of the race. Three drivers on the podium have started outside of the top ten. But that safety goal, I mean, even without it, I think the safety goal put the, that top three more in jeopardy more than anything. It really brought the pack of cars closer to them. But now Albon plays the champagne, all three of them really, they all earned that podium holding us off at the end of the race as well. And we're splitting up some great racing between those three. Taking a look at the results for what is probably the race of the season. And Alex Albon is your new and latest race winner in Formula 1. Seven seconds clear of Rio Harry Anto in the end after an epic battle with Latifi to just steal second place there on the final lap. And credit to the most due, they both managed to hold us, hold me off there in fourth. With Johnny Vern in P5 in the end, getting past Hamilton and Kvyat in the final lap, so Kvyat didn't, didn't have the greatest end to that race. Verstappen down in eighth place, we're still going to be happy for his teammate taking his first win, with, uh, with Nico Hulkenberg finishing where he started in ninth, but takes the point for fastest lap. Make sure Maker gets back coming to 10th place for Williams, with Massachusetts in 11th, and K Mag getting just about into the top 12 for Alfa Romeo. Moving on now to the driver standings. And Hamilton still leads, 34 points now ahead of us. So we claw back a, f a few more points today with Matsushita in P3, with Hawkenberg, despite his poor race, staying in 4th. 19 points clear, his teammate John Eric Verne, who's in 5th. Kim Mag stays in 6th, 5 points clear of Danny Kvyat. With Verstappen in 8th place, but now only 1 point clear of his teammate Alex Albon with his win here today. With Latifi in 10th place, getting back ahead of teammate Mick Schumacher by 1 point in the Williams battle. And Sebastian Vettel riding off the top 12 for Ferrari. And on now to the constructor standings. And Toyota, unsurprisingly, still lead the way, almost 100 points clear now. Of Renault in second, and Alpha in third, still clawing away a little bit at the gap to second place. Now only eight points behind Renault. Aston Martin, Red Bull remain in fourth place. Ten points clear now of Williams. 
Does Mercedes drop back a little bit in sixth place? With Ferrari and P7 30 points behind their German rivals. And they're now only one point clear of McLaren with their good haul of points here today. Aston Martin in P9. Is with AlphaTauri still bringing up the rear, seven points behind the Pink Panthers. Don't leave a like if you enjoyed. You can now like subscribe if you hit the notification bell so if you any future videos. If you give me a follow on Twitter and Instagram, that'd be much appreciated. Also, vote for your driver of the day with the poll link that'll be in the video description. And if you could check out the wiki for the season, that'd be much appreciated. I edited it, updated it after every single race, and also one for the season, past seasons, every team, every driver. Maybe even a sneak peek of what's to come in the future as well. And it takes me a lot, a lot of time to write it with doing every single one myself, so I'd appreciate it if you go and check that out. Yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.